when I have free time, I think, what would I like to do? And one of the things I constantly come up with is I really like to talk about electrochemistry. Specifically, one of my favorite things to discuss is voltaic cells. So I thought today I would talk about really four things about voltaic cells. And uh, yeah, you, you might want to take some notes on this because it's pretty good stuff. First, there's something called line notation. Then Le Chatelet's principle, which you may remember from equilibrium. Then the Nernst equation and something called concentration cells. So four just amazing things for us to discuss today. So let's start. Yeah, definitely amazing. All right, so let's start. Let's start with a simple zinc copper cell. We've talked about this before. Now, hopefully you recognize on one side we have a zinc solution and that's a piece of zinc. The other side, we have a copper solution and a piece of copper. They're collect, connected by a wire. And then also in between them, in the, instead of a salt bridge, we have a porous disc. How do you figure out how the cell works? Well, quick review. What we want to first do is look at a reduction table. Now, we want to find both of these on the reduction table. So first, we find the copper. Wow, I see the copper has a reduction value of 0.34 volts. And then I want to look up the zinc value, and the zinc value is, bam, negative 0.76 volts. Now, hopefully you remember the most negative, or this whole thing is reduction table, reduction table. Everything is grr, gaining electrons reduce, all the electrons are on the left, so are all gaining electrons. So the copper has the most positive value. The one that is the most positive always occurs as reduction. So the co copper will be a reduction, and we'll write it just as we see right here. And the zinc will be written in reverse, and that occurs as an oxidation. So what's going to happen when we do that is we're going to make the negative 0.76 a positive 0.76. So let's see how this works. In our cell made of copper and zinc, we said copper was written as is, and it's got the 0.34 volts. And so that's our reduction. And then the, the negative 0.76, we make a positive 0.76. And we flip that around, and that becomes our oxidation. Remember, you have to have one reduction, one oxidation. You can't have two reductions or two oxidations. So the gaining electrons, we see electrons are on the left, that means they're gained, is a reduction, is a reduction, gain electrons reduced. Then on the other side, we see that's an oxidation because zinc actually lost two electrons. Anytime electrons are on the right, they're lost lose the electrons, oxidize, that's an oxidation. So we want to sum these up and bam, there it is, our overall cell reaction. And we want to sum the values just the same way we did here. Now notice what's awesome is our electrons canceled out, bye-bye. And then we can combine those voltages. And this is our standard voltage. I could have written the not sign because that, that means everything's at standard conditions. The first thing that's new that I want to introduce is something called a line notation. I want to write the stuff that's the anode, that would be the zinc, on the left. And so the way that works is everything on this side represents the anode. First, you write the electrode. Notice the zinc is the electrode. And then you write the electrolyte. That's the solution. That would be the zinc ion. Then this double line in the center, you have a, a single line representing uh, rep Excuse me, we have a single line separating the electrode and the electrolyte. Then we have a double line separating the anode and the cathode. And guess what that double line represents? You guessed it, it is the salt bridge. And then we have the cathode electrolyte and then the cathode electrode. It's a line notation. Quickly, let's go through those. So a line notation is simply a way to describe an electrochemical cell. The anode compartments are listed on the left. The cathode compartments are listed on the right. They're separated by double vertical lines, which indicates a salt bridge or a porous disk. And the concentration of the solutions can also be written as part of that notation. For example, in this one, we have, if you look that up, the the anode would be the magnesium. We see that's on the left. We have the wonderful salt bridge, and then we have the cathode with the aluminum on the right. So that's line notation. Okay, first thing, let's keep going. 
You got the cell, let's go over what this line notation would be. Remember, we just put the anode, this, on the left. So we, here we have our anode. And then our cathode, with the copper, that's our reduction, on the right. And then we have it separated by a salt bridge. So our line notation. Next. So next we're going to talk about how Le Chatelet's principle comes into play when we looked at, look at electrolytic cells. Think of this reaction. If we want a greater voltage, we want the reaction to go to the right. So what would make the reaction go to the right? Well, remember, solids and liquids do not impact equilibrium. Basically, we're saying zinc and copper will not, if we add more solid zinc, add more solid copper, it will not shift that equilibrium. They need to be present, but if you add more, it won't change it. But if you increase the concentration of copper, it should shift the equilibrium. Similarly, if we decrease the con concentration of zinc, that will shift the equilibrium. So remember, if we said we, for example, the voltage is 1.10 volt under standard conditions of one molar, if we increase the concentration of copper, that's going to shift the reaction to the right, and then that's going to increase our voltage. Another option is we could say we, if we increase the concentration of zinc, that's going to shift the reaction to the left, and that's going to decrease the voltage. Now, actually, there's four possibilities here. The other thing we could do is we could say if we decrease the concentration of copper, that would shift it to the left, and that, and that instead of increasing, that would decrease voltage. Similarly, we could look at zinc and decrease the concentration of zinc. That would shift the reaction to the right, and also aid in increasing the voltage. That's how Le Chatelier's works. If we look at the reaction, think about how it affects reaction. Now, the other thing we want to do is think about how this reaction works with a particle representation. Now, there's three things that are visible here that you're going to see as this reaction proceeds. Remember, we have a copper solution. Well, what's happening here? So what's going to happen? This zinc electrode is going to get smaller. So that's the first thing. The zinc electrode will get smaller. And the way that looks is you're going to actually see the solid zinc ions go into solution and, well, actually, I'm sorry, solid zinc atoms will be released and become zinc ions with a positive two charge. On the other side, the copper electrode will actually increase in size. It'll get bigger over time because copper is going to be plated. So the copper 2 plus will go from solution and then will be plated as solid copper on the piece of copper. That's the second thing. So you see the anode, the electrode will get smaller. The cathode, the electrode will get bigger. And the other thing that would be visible here, since this is a colored solution, this blue solution will become less blue as a reaction proceeds. Now this is going to keep going until the cell reach, reaches zero potential, and at that point the cell is simply dead and the reaction is going to stop because there's no difference in the driving force for the uh, two processes. Another thing you might have noticed here, something that we can use instead of a salt bridge, we've talked about a salt bridge is a porous disk, so those are really interchangeable as we talk about this discuss discussion, so two types are alternates to having a salt bridge. Another thing you may have noticed is sometimes that these reactions include gas. Well, how does that work? Well, simply you have a tube in which gas is pumped in, and you have a platinum electrode, and you use a concentration, usually you need an acidic solution, of one molar hydrochloric acid or some acid. And that is the standard zero voltage on which the cell reduction potential table is, is based. Next, we want to talk about the Nernst equation. Now, Nernst, as you could guess, is named after some German person back who was a, a great chemist. The Nernst equation shows the relationship between cell potentials and the concentration. So we talked about it qualitatively. It puts it in a quantitative sense. At 25 degrees Celsius, this is a Nernst equation. Now, what we have here is we have this, the voltage or the electromotive force that's under non-standard conditions. So it means when we change the concentrations. Now, E represents standard conditions. N represents the number of moles of electrons. The 0.0591 is a standard number. Then hopefully you remember Q is going to be the reaction quotient when it's products of reactants. Remember, we only, only include ions. We don't include solids or liquids in that. Now, the other alternate to this is if it's, if it's 
at standard conditions, we say E0 is equal to 0 0.0592 over N log of K. Now remember, KRQ is always, now that is only at equilibrium, products of reactants. So both K and Q are equal to this value. So a couple things to consider. Remember, if we increase the reactance, that shifts it to the right and increases voltage. If we decrease the products, that also shifts it to the right and, and increases the voltage. Un, so that's looking at it just from Le Chatelet's principle. Another way to look at it is mathematically. For example, if the products over the reactant was equal to 10, and you take log of 10 and that's 1, notice that this is a subtraction sign. So any number that's greater than 1, when, when you take the log of that, you're going to get a positive value. And when you subtract that, it's going to decrease your voltage. The other way to think about it is if you have a number that's smaller than 1. Let's say we have, we have 1 over 10, which is 0.1. Log of 0.1 will be a negative 1. And minus a negative 1 means you're increasing the voltage. So anytime you have log of a number smaller than 1, it's going to increase your voltage. Anytime you have a log of a number greater than 1, it's going to decrease your voltage. That's an Ernst equation. So a couple of things we've talked about here. This is our standard zinc copper cell. Electromotive force is independent of the size or shape of electrodes. Remember, we think about that because solids do not affect equilibrium. We've talked about that in the section on equilibrium. Another thing to think about is electromotive force increases as a concentration of reactants increase and the concentration of the products decrease. Now, you could also think electromotive force, we could just change this around a little bit, decreases as a concentration of the reactants decrease and the concentration of the products increase because the top scenario drives a reaction to the right, the bottom and increases voltage. The bottom scenario drives a reaction to the left and thus decreases voltage. Finally, we want to talk about something called the concentration cell, which seems sort of strange because we have a voltage cell, a cell here, but we have silver on both sides. We have silver electrodes and we have a silver solution on both sides. The reaction would look like this. We would say we have silver ion reacting with silver solid gives us silver ion and silver solid. What would be the voltage for this? Would, the voltage would be 1 because we'd be adding uh, 0.8 and then subtracting 0.8, so we have zero voltage. So the only way to get a voltage from this is actually to increase the reaction, uh, the concentration on one side. Basically, if you increase the concentration on one side, that becomes your reduction, and the concentration that's lower becomes the one that's oxidized. So here we have a concentration cell, and in the concentration cell, both components initially are the same, but it's a difference in concentration that is the only factor that produces a voltage. Now, this voltage is usually not too big. And remember, the way this works, the cathode is always the one that's of higher concentration. So if you make one cell 0.1 and one 1, the one that is 1 will be the reduction or the cathode. So the one that's higher concentration is always going to be a reduction. The one that's lower concentration will always be the oxidation. So that's a concentration cell. So we talked a little bit about voltaic cells today. Hopefully this adds to a little bit of your knowledge of voltaic or spontaneous cells, electrochemical cells. If you have any questions, let me know. I look forward to doing some questions and labs and all kinds of stuff with this when we get back. Have a great day.